This is a Vecchia neck reading light. I was sent this to review for free. If you wanted to purchase it, it would cost you $16. They haven't paid me for my review, so my opinions remain my own. So in the packaging, you get a little instruction manual here. A cable, which is a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. And then this flexible neck light. And this is the gray color neck light. So it has a piece in the back which has um, kind of a solid plastic back and then kind of a rubbery texture thing here that goes against your neck. There's a USB-C charging point there. There's three lights on the bottom. There's two flexible arms that extend from that. And then there's two of these light arms. And there is a button right here. It has a light button and a temperature button, which I'm assuming is a color temperature button. And there's a power on off button on the other side. So I pushed the power on off button and the lights turned on. Um, I'm gonna push the light button. It went to dim, it went to brighter, went to brighter, 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 dim again. So there's multiple levels of brightness. And if you hit the color temperature button, we have, you know, white, or yellow, and it looks like it just switches back between kind of cool white and very warm yellow. Okay, so these lights also have a zooming feature where if you're pointing them at something, you can zoom or pull back so they can go, you know, to a, a wide overview light or they can do a zoomed in kind of point focus light. I'm in a very dim room. It's not fully dark, but it's definitely dim. And this guy at the highest setting is putting out plenty of light. It's at the wide mode right now. And I have, you know, not a super small paperback, but not a you know, super giant book either. Um, and it's fully covering that book with lots of light around to spare. I think I could probably um, definitely zoom these in a little bit more. Let's see what happens. So. When I zoom them in, it's not as comfortable to read. There's some definite hot spots. I can see there's two points of light, one on each page of the book here. Um, you know, so if I had a smaller paperback and it was a little bit farther away, that might be the way to go. But I think with this larger book, having these guys just out just a little bit more makes the light nice and even. Yeah, so right now the light is fully even across the entire page. Um, and the only shadows is right in the very center when my book is, is kind of, you know, bent in like that. So these guys work pretty well. You can aim them upwards pretty high. So, you know, you could, you could aim them up at a higher level um, or down to where you're holding the book in your lap. So the aiming works pretty well. They stay where you put them pretty well. Moving my head back and forth, the light is barely moving because it's stuck to my neck instead of my head. If I do up and down, the neck moves a bit more and the light moves a little bit. But with these at the wide, it, it, it's, when these are at the wide um, zoom level, they are pretty darn good here. You can see my hands out here getting light way out here. So it's probably, I'd say, a 90 degree field of view when it's at that wide level and it's pretty darn good. Now at the zoomed level, they're more like a flashlight. I mean, you can shine them across the room and you know get a, a point of light at a very specific location. Um, so if you need a point of light at a very specific spot, you could zoom these in. But I think most people are going to be using these at the wide level. And this is the brightest setting. Now the dimmest setting, that's pretty dim but it's definitely giving me light. So I could see using that if there was someone else in the room with you, you were trying to read while someone else was sleeping. Um, you could flip this also to the color temperature, to the yellow color temperature, instead of the kind of the harsh bluish white color. Um, and so there's a, a pretty dim mode there. I wouldn't want to read at that unless I was in a fully dark room though. Now the second level up is pretty good, even in this somewhat dim room. And the bright level is brighter than it really needs to be. So I think, you know, level three or four is plenty um, for reading. Let me go to a fully dark room to get a feel for that. All right, I am in my utility closet here, fully dark except for this flashlight. And, um, you know, this is at the highest level in the yellow light. 
but you know I'm blocking some of the light with my camera even and you can see you know that that book is very easily readable here let me adjust the lighting down so this is the dimmest level at the yellow light and the book is visible I can see the text I could read the text if I was trying hard but I wouldn't want to so I don't like the dimmest level that far away if your book was closer to the lights I think it worked pretty darn well I'm going to go up to the next highest level all right, so this is the second highest dim level on the yellow light in completely dark environment. Um, that's pretty comfortable for reading right there. Let me try going to the white light mode. And so this is white light mode um, in fully dark conditions at the second highest power level. So it's, I think that's perfectly good for reading there. And this is the highest power level. You can see the shadow from my camera there, but where the book, there, I'll get the camera out of the shadow mostly. Um, so that is plenty bright. Um, that's pretty darn good there. So I think for crafting or, you know, cross stitching, knitting, something like that, um, you have this thing turned to the brightest level. You're not going to have trouble seeing things even in a fully dark environment. So here I am, I haven't turned on any of my crafting lights, um, and just holding this thing pointing up in front of me, I have it zoomed in now, so it's kind of pointing at this little model. Um, that gives a decent amount of light. Let me turn off the light here. All right, so that's with the light turned off um, in the same illumination from just outdoors. Um, you can see here when I turn the lights on, it definitely lights up the front of the model here. So that's with the light turned on. So size-wise, it's a little bit bigger than like a clip-on book light, but it's not that much bigger, and it folds down into a relatively flat package. So if you're you know, packing in luggage or something, it would be flat and you can put stuff around it. Um, it's very comfortable to wear. It doesn't weigh too much, and it's kind of big, but it mostly just hangs around your neck and just hangs out, and you just kind of forget you're wearing it. Um, I like the very directionality of it, so if you have these zoomed in where you have the, um, the lights pointing at a specific spot, you can you know point them exactly where you want them but most of the time i think i would use this out like that um, and with them zoomed out you don't really have to point them too close to what you're working at. it kind of just floods the whole area with light um, and so for reading it it's it's great because it does a good illumination across both pages of your book um, so functionality wise this thing works really well i am going to charge it and we will charge it all the way up and then run it at full brightness and see how long it goes so according to the specification sheet, it has a one amp hour battery, and at max illumination, it's a 1.5 watt light. So that basically equates to about two and a half hours of runtime at maximum illumination. We'll see if it lives up to those specifications. All right, so they include a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. It says USB-C port here. I want to see if this guy can negotiate USB-C power delivery charging, and it can. So it's negotiated power delivery charging. It only draws like half an amp here, so it's, you know, two and a half watts. So basically pretty much any USB port you plug this guy into is going to be charging it just fine. has three little lights here. Currently two are lit up and one is flashing. Um, you won't be able to see the battery indicator lights while you're wearing it, but it's useful to know when it's charging and just if you you know you want to check the battery indicator level you can just turn on the light before you put it on and look at the number of dots back here so with these lights if you want to check the battery if you turn the light on it'll show up but also you can just do the color temperature button and so without turning the light on you can push the color temperature button the battery display lights up and it'll stay lit up for about 10 seconds and then it'll turn off on its own okay this guy's fully charged all three lights are on it's drawing zero amps let's give it a runtime test Okay, it is 12.46 p.m. I turned on this light at the brightest setting. I'm using the white instead of the amber color. Um, and we're just going to let this guy run, and the time-lapse camera will tell us how long it goes at the full brightness setting. So it is 5.02 p.m. and we still are getting light out of this guy.
So watching the time-lapse video here, it had a good six and a half hours of full brightness light. And then it slowly dimmed down over the next hour to an hour and a half to an unusable state. So we got a, a full six hours of runtime fully charged. Okay, I ran the battery on this guy down so far that the blue lights won't even come on when I'm trying to push the power button or pushing the uh, color temperature buttons. Okay, so after depleting the battery completely, I am charging it back up and we're going to see how much power it takes to recharge the battery. It's drawing just half an amp here, two and a half watts, so pretty much any USB port you plug it into will be able to charge this guy at full speed. Okay, this guy's fully charged. It took 5 watt hours or 1.1 amp hour at 5 volts. And so that is definitely an amp hour battery in there. So there's, there's at least a 1 amp hour battery inside this neck band. So one feature I learned about here is it has two lights and if you push and hold the power button, one of them will go out. You can tap again and the other one goes out. But if you do this push and hold when they're on, you can switch from one, you push and hold again, and it switches to the other. So you can use either the left or the right light by themselves, but to do that you have to push and hold. If you just kind of push, it'll turn on and off both lights. I've been pretty impressed with this guy. Um, it went for about six and a half hours at full brightness and then had another hour where it just gradually dimmed down over time. Um, the battery is at least an amp hour. Uh, it took more than that to charge it back up. Um, the lights are pretty darn bright for reading. Um, craft work, anything close nearby, the adjustability of them is kind of useful. Um, I like, you know, generally I'm going to be using these at the wide setting, but you could zoom them into a narrow setting if you want to. And then they have plenty of brightness at the bright, <laughs> you know, the bright light levels are, are plenty bright for working on things. Um, the color temperature, I could see if you don't like the bright, bright, uh, cool white light, the, the super amber light, you know, it's like 1800 Kelvin light, um, is definitely warmer, or you can use the bright white light. So at this price point, you know, it's not an expensive purchase. They cost maybe 50% more than a generic clip-on book light. And you get kind of two lights, you get the aiming, you get a nice form factor for wearing them instead of holding them on your book. So if you like this form factor, I think it's definitely worth paying, you know, an extra five bucks or so just to get that neck-mounted light.